bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit of $200. Get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back. All from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Hi, everybody. Dan Oman along with Mike Beer. It's time for our first edition of Kentucky Derby Prep Recap 2023. The first baby steps on the Arkansas road to the Kentucky Derby. They happened on New Year's Day in the Smarty Jones Stakes. Let's break from the gate. And victory formation was bet like he couldn't lose. He just had to handle the distance question. He did it without an issue. Yeah, he really did. I mean, this this really wasn't much of a field. He's three to five um, coming into this race, Dan, off of two um, pretty impressive wins sprinting. And you can see how easy how easy his speed is uh, from the gate. And he really had no trouble clearing to the lead here around the first turn. And on paper, it didn't look like there was going to be much to challenge him on the front end. You saw him get to the lead without much of an issue. And this is just a candy trip right now. Up front, loose on the lead with a million to one shot and another million to one shot chasing you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, once he cleared into that first turn, I um, mean, he did it so easily. You know, he's you're right that he's loose up the backstretch. That long shot to four there is trying, I guess, to keep him at least a little bit honest on the lead. Um, Western Ghent, though, just uh, as it turns out, isn't much horse. And so, you know, this horse victory formation has no no trouble cutting this pace. He's not really under any pressure. And from this point on, he's never going to really face any kind of a challenge in here. His uncoupled stable mate is sitting the pocket in behind him, and the blue silks is the number seven. That's Angel of Empire, and he's going to show a willingness at least to come on through along the inside, but he never looked like he was going to threaten victory formation, and it looks like victory formation is still warming up, turning into the short stretch. Right. I mean, it is a short stretch. They're going to shake up the favorite now, and he's just going to keep about his business. I don't. I can't say that I love the way he finishes this race off, Dan, but... You know, at the end of the day, there's no real running going on behind him. His uncoupled stable mate, who was two for two on dirt on the way into this race, he just got a great ride from Joe Talamo, saved every inch of ground uh, and, and rode it to a clear cut second place finish. But he never got anywhere near a stable mate. Victory Formation is now three for three in his career. He received a 91 buyer speed figure, a career high in winning the Smarty Jones. He looked good in both of his sprint starts as a two-year-old winning his maiden with an 81 buyer at Keeneland, going six and a half furlongs by open lengths, and then backing that race up with a narrow win and a first-level allowance at Churchill with an 85 buyer. Let's talk about some of the also-rans in here. The second choice in this race, Mike, was 10 days later, who finished sixth. And going into the race, it didn't look like 10 days later had any kind of speed, and it looked like he would need a little bit of pace help. And it turns out, I'm not sure if any kind of pace help would have helped him because he had virtually zero speed whatsoever. He's just a plotter. Yeah, the real, yeah, that that that's a problem for this horse going forward anyway, just that he doesn't have any speed. He didn't break that sharply here and got totally outrun early um, in this race. He was never really within range of the leaders at any point in this race. And then as it turns out, Dan, um, you know, I guess you could say he was compromised. Let's see him, you know, catch up to this field and then make a run through the stretch. And as it turns out, he didn't even do that. I mean, this horse, he was pretty bad in this race. Another disappointment was the Steve Asmussen trained communication memo who finished next to last. He was coming into this race off a Carson distance win at Oaklawn Park. He was a little bit green in that race, but he showed a little bit of speed. Here he really didn't show anything. True enough. I mean, he did get a three wide trip in this race, but um, I don't really know what else to say about it. He was he was absolutely awful in here, completely empty before this field hit the quarter pole. Let's talk a little bit about Dennington, who was able to rally a little bit to get up for third, six lengths behind the winner and no threat to the top two. At least it was nice to see him do a little something in the stretch. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I I found it hard to, you know, really get behind any of the also rans in this race, Dan. I suppose as far as Dennington goes, um, at least you could say, you know, around that first turn anyway in the race, he just got hung up very wide around that first turn. His rider could not get him over to save any ground. Um, after that, though, I thought his rider did everything right and gave this horse a little bit of an in-out run to the stretch, and he just didn't finish that hard. Let's take a closer look at the winner, Victory Formation. Again, he's three for three in his career. He is by Belmont Stakes winner, Taprit. And when you look at him now, and of course, it's early January, way too early to even really seriously narrow down Kentucky Derby contenders. But at this point, he's got a lot going for him. He obviously has some speed and ability. He has some professionalism as well. 
And he also has an interesting pedigree, Mike, with a little bit of stamina over speed with plenty of class sprinkled in. Yeah, I agree with that. It'll be interesting to see how the tap breaks turn out. I mean, you would think that they would be able to go long. Um, there's distance on the bottom of this pedigree. A second dam was a, a really good dirt router, a graded stakes winner. I think all six of her career wins came routing uh, on the main track. So there's a little bit of distance here. He's got good speed. Um, I think he got a 91 buyer for this race, which, you know, is, is a pretty nice figure this early uh, for a three-year-old. So, you know, it's really hard to knock this horse. Obviously, the, the road's going to get a lot tougher as time goes on, but he's looked pretty good so far. And he obviously has the connections in his corner as well. Brad Cox and Flavian Pratt. This victory formation is a half-brother to Bellarmine, who is grade one place routing on the turf. Third in the Rodeo Drive, going a mile and a quarter. So you're right about the distance pedigree on the bottom. And, of course, Tappert won the Belmont Stakes. So things looking up for victory formation from a pedigree standpoint. He went through the auction ring three times and advanced each time. $100,000 yearling, a $100,000 weanling, a $150,000 yearling, sold for $340,000 dollars last may victory formation three for three as we take a look at the prices for the smarty jones it was no surprise in here the chalk players were right brad cox runs one two three dollars and twenty cents for victory formation angel of empire saved ground throughout for second dennington got up for third i'm expecting we'll see victory formation at oaklawn again maybe in the southwest or the rebel